Pause of Friday. Rolling through. Congratulations to uh, uh, Ad Hardcore Euler. He won the $100 courtesy of uh, Jiffy Loop. A little Pause of Friday giveaway that we did on Twitter. If you missed it, check my pinned tweet. We do those randomly every now and then on Pause of Fridays. Who doesn't like a little extra cash? Just for uh, following. Pretty simple. So you can check that out on Twitter. Thanks to uh, Jiffy Lube and uh, Hardcore Oiler. Hope you uh, enjoy. Don't spend it all in one place. Okay. Don't waste it on a pickleball racket or anything like that. As we get to uh, our big guest of the day, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee Canada, roasted fresh every day in Alberta. You can stop in their store by a service place or go online blackriflecoffee.ca make your purchase it's a $40 purchase when you check out click on the black CAF mug pick it up use the code word Jason you get it for free you can win all sorts of great prizes and hey let's be honest I was kidding you can't get a pickleball racket for 100 bones probably way more expensive than that as uh, Craig Button from uh, TSN joins us Butts how you doing how much does a pickleball racket cost you nowadays hey listen for us uh, professionals you know they're 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 specially made for us out of uh, you know composite materials. You know probably five hundred dollars. Jeez, that's a legit, that's a legit. <laughs> must, must say. I'm totally Don't waste around, man. You can get a you can get a good rack. You get you can get a good pickleball racket for a hundred and twenty bucks. Oh, okay, all right. Well, so hey, you have to add in a little to the hundred we want, so that's all right. Um, Kirk, you I know, just want to warn you. Interest- I'm going to warn you right yeah. now. My wife now, her a good friend of ours, just became the executive director of Pickleball Canada. My wife is on the board of Pickleball oh. Canada now. She just heard your comments. You're in trouble. You'll oh, never I love you. it. You're in trouble with her. Jeez. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, this now. So if she's on the board. Like, is she, like, does she wax the floor with you? <laughs> What am I going to say? No, I'm going to try to be all brave. Yeah, like you know, that was one of those questions where I had no chance. Good, good on you, interviewer. <laughs> you win an award for that, Greg. Or nice move. <laughs> uh, uh, Craig, the the orders and the Jets. It was, you know, what some people felt ah, there wasn't any fans. Maybe it was a lack of emotion. Well, you know, I didn't really buy that. And then we saw what Montreal and Toronto did. They had no fans either. Like, you know what? It was a cautious game, really, on both sides. Like, it's not like Winnipeg. Winnipeg did a lot, but what Winnipeg did was they didn't allow, I think, Edmonton to play to their strength. So you're the orders tonight. If I'm Dave Tippett, I'm loading up McDavid and Dreisaitl because my team's been good enough defensively since February 1st, fifth best in the NHL. We don't, they don't give up a lot of goals. I'm playing McDavid and Dreisaitl tonight because I know when they're together, they dominate. Yeah, hey, listen, and do you have to play them together all the time? No. I love how Dave Tippett works the second period change. Uh, in his favor. He, he, he's so good at taking advantage of that change and, you know, really, you know, getting McDavid out there at, at different points in time, at, you know, getting McDavid and dry side all over against. And he's always going to do that. I think that to your point, Jason, and, and we talked about it the other day, you know, one of the things you said, you know, they, they you know, we took what the defense gave us. Well, if they don't give you anything, what are you going to do? Just be satisfied taking it? No. You you got to take more. You got to be you you got to be a pig at the trough. You know what? You, there's never too much you can take. And you know, for the Edmonton Oilers, I, I thought that they satisfied is the wrong word. I think they settled into a game. It was tactical. It was chess like. And then their options narrowed. And I think they got to spread up their spread op- open up their options. You know, you you sent out a tweet yesterday about the Colorado Avalanche. The Colorado Avalanche. They open up every part of ice because everybody's attacking, and they're not just looking for McKinnon. I think that's what the Edmonton Oilers have to do, and I I agree. The more you have the duo of McDavid and Dreisaitl playing together, the more you put Winnipeg back on their heels. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because you look at the way that they did they the game wasn't bad, but it just wasn't good enough. So how do you how do you get a group to think okay we we got to find like another level of intensity because quite frankly it's if we just keep like that Winnipeg wants a game like that. You, you nailed it for, in my view, Jason. It's because like okay, so are we going to give them what they want, or are we or are we going to give them what we want, right? And, and those are two very different things. And, like, like I get into my head, and Jason Gregor, you just made the comment about defensive play and everything. Goes, you know what? Play on your toes. Get after them. Put them back on their heels. Make them defend you. 
don't just settle in and say, oh, they're defending us and this is how we're going to play. And, and Jason Strudwick, you're, you're right. Like, how do you do? But, but I think it starts with we're going to attack. We're going to attack. You know, one of the interesting things, and I, I'm watching some of the games and watching the Florida-Tampa Bay series specifically, they get, it doesn't matter where they are. When they get the puck, they get into attack mode. And it reminds me of the 2016 Finnish team at the World Junior Tournament and Yuka Yawadin, who was a coach. And he told me this before the tournament. He said, we're going to attack from the minute we have the puck. We're going to attack. It doesn't matter when we have the puck. He goes, I don't care if we're in the corner, below the goal line. We're in attack mode. And we're going to go and attack, 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 attack. And that's what he instilled in his team. The Colorado Avalanche do it. I've watched it in the Lightning Panthers series. And I think that the Oilers can do it. I think they have the defensemen that can skate and get into that mentality. And whether you're getting the puck and you're a release guy as a defenseman or you're skating forward, you can't just be looking at one option, get it to McDavid or move it to Dreisaitl, be safe. You know, mm. attack, and I, I, I think that's that's the focus that has to get in get into their play. Greg Button from uh, TSN joins us. Uh, Pierre Luc Dubois, Greg, it hasn't been you know, hey, lots of guys get traded and don't have instant success. It's it's not been a great successful season for him. But hey, the playoffs is a whole new life for all players. Uh, what do you think Dubois is going to add to the Jets lineup tonight? Well, I mean, he adds he adds more skill. He adds more size with respect to the, the way he plays. Listen, Pierre-Luc Dubois is capable. And, you know, I, I, I don't know how many times we're going to hear it through the course of the, of the playoffs. It's a whole new season. It is. And so what, what, what's happened in the, in, in the regular season, you know, he can put it all behind him. What Pierre-Luc Dubois has is, is, is a real significant grasp of a really successful player last year uh, during the playoffs versus Toronto and then against Tampa Bay. And I think, like, if he just gets it into his head, this is what I'm going to be. You know, I, I, sometimes I wonder if players, you know, get traded and then they want to show that they're more than they are or they try to do more instead of just, hey, here's how we got to play. I think the playoffs afford Pierre-Luc Dubois to just get back to the player he was and can be. And that is a big, strong skating player that can create offense. And just as importantly, you know, make life difficult for your opponent. The, the forwards he's playing against, defensemen that he'll attack and challenge. That's what I think. And I think that coming back from an injury, you know, the, you know, sometimes less is more. It might play right into his strengths. You know, obviously it goes without saying you want to be as healthy as possible. If he's healthy and ready to go, then I just say, hey, let's get going in there and get playing. But that's that's where that, that's the type of player that I think that the Winnipeg Jets are looking for. I think it's the type of player that he's shown he can be really good uh, at being, and that's just what he's got to focus in on. Yeah, it's 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 a big ad for him. You know, you look at some of the interactions between uh, Pionk and and McDavid. You know, whether it was in the corner or you know at the end of the period, is that a slippery slope for for to, for the Oilers to kind of allow that uh, type of, uh, um, I guess, handling of, of their top player uh, slide? Well, Jason, you never want you know, and, and Neil Pionk's interesting because he, he's the type of player, right? That like you you know like you're not going to put somebody on him that's going to go and try to run him. He's quick. He's, he's elusive, right? He's not going to fight anybody or take on anybody beyond his weight class. So he becomes a really interesting player to match up against McDavid. And so now I'm going to go back to what Jason Greger said. If you put Dreisaitl and, you, and McDavid together and Pionk's the matchup, just tell Leon, go in there and be a bear on this guy. Because Neil Pionk won't be able to handle the young guys, I don't. It'll be, a, it'll be an advantage for the uh, Edmonton Oilers, which will extend to an advantage to Connor McDavid. And, and, and now you, 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 can, you can mitigate against that. The other thing I think, too, Jason, and you know this, different challenges that come about in, in, in real testy playoff series, is that, you know, when you're out there with McDavid, so he's going to be, uh, you know, Cahoon, you know, I don't know if, he, if, if he's that player, but for Pooley Arby, if you can convince him that after every stoppage, you've got to make a beeline to intercept anybody trying to get in Connor McDavid's face. Because ultimately what you're trying to, what they're trying to do is, is get into his space 
and get into his under his skin. Well, don't let frustrate them. Get right in there. Get, cut them right off. Oh no, oh, you, yeah, go ahead, Pion. You're going to deal with me first. You know. So I think if you did those two things, you you, you throw different elements at uh, at uh, Pion. You know, Zach Cassian's played with uh, McDavid in the past. It might not be a little bit of a bad task. It, not, it might not be a bad ask to task Zach Cassian with that. Get him a little bit more invested at different times. I'm not saying playing him regularly there. Intercept him. When he wants to get to McDavid, you're not getting one. We're not letting you get to that guy. Craig Button from uh, TSN uh, joins us, and it's it is interesting. Like I, fe- I felt like that a lot of just too easily for for Pionk. and I know McDavid can handle it, but it's as Stratty said, he goes yeah. it just illustrates to everybody it's open season. They can do what you want uh, in that game. Now we'll look at some of the other uh, series, Craig, and you know Boston, Washington. It's been extremely close. Can't get much closer than three overtime games, and the Bruins now have the uh, the lead. That series and the Tampa Florida series have been uh, really exciting to watch for me. Let's get to the Boston Washington series. Is you know, is it really just too close to call? Hey, the Bruins, what they won twice in overtime. So hey, or is there anything you you think Washington uh, needs to improve on? Well, at the end of all three games, nobody was winning. I don't know if it gets closer than that. Regulation, right? At the end of regulation time, in all three games, nobody was winning. I, I, that to me is, is as close as it gets. So we know that overtime comes down to one goal. They're very evenly matched. They're very closely matched. I mean, a, a, a blunder uh, behind the net with Samsonov and uh, Schultz leads to the winning goal uh, in game three. But, you know, like I, I think right now the Washington Capitals, if they want to find a way to try to gain an edge, I really believe that Danny Kuznetsov is going to have to provide it. You know, he hasn't had a great regular season. He, he, he was out of the lineup twice because of COVID protocol. And in, in, since his return in this series, I, I don't think he's had, had, had much of an impact, uh, if any at all. And I think that he is a player that can give the Caps a little bit of an edge. I, I like the Bruins' depth. I like the way that uh, Charlie McAvoy is playing. You know, I, I, I don't think the, the goaltending either side is, is, is you know, considerably advantageous for one team or the other. So I think it will be close. But for the Washington Capitals, if, if Kuznetsov can get his level, I think he can tip it a little bit more in their favor. But I see this six, seven games. I really do. Joined by Craig Button, talking all things NHL related. Um, you know, flip it over maybe to uh, Florida Tampa. Like the coach's nightmare last year or last night, unless you win the game. <laughs> uh, but you know, and it's funny. Like you're, you're, you're Florida. It's every goal he's going is. Is there a point where you look at Spencer Knight, or, or is that just a bridge too far? I don't. You know, I I think Jason, you always have to consider different options. But, you know, he's a young goalie. He's a rookie goalie. We know that. He's got very few games under his belt at this level. But I, I, I know Spencer. I know that Spencer, there's two things about Spencer. He's got a real mature, calm, and poise about his game. That's number one. Number two, he, at, at a younger age, he's 20 years old, he's a really technically sound goaltender. And, you know, nothing phases him. He's always played... It, it, you know, beyond his years, and he's always played above his age group, and and he's always been very successful. So I don't think it's. A, I think when you mention that, I, I don't think that that's just something you throw out that that, that, that you just dismiss out of hand. And he, and he was very good for the Florida Panthers this year. You know, it, it's always the Tampa Bay Lightning are good. That you know, Florida needed to win that game for more reasons uh, than just going down three nothing. It's because. How many times do you going to get an Andre Vasilevsky play that way, play that poorly, and and they have to take advantage of it? But I think for John Cooper, you never want to have a game like the one last night. You talk about coaches' nightmares, but it's one of those games where you can come back to your team and go, okay, you want to play like this? Just understand, this is how we're going to end up. Uh, this is what the end result's going to be. And you know, it's, it becomes a reminder. And for a championship team and a team that knows what it takes to win 16 games. You, you sometimes have games like that in the course of a playoff, but it gives John Cooper the opportunity to dial it in and dial it up. And, and for the players to understand, do we want to go back to Florida 2-2 or do we want to go back to Florida 3-1? And I think it's a pretty easy sell. Craig Button from uh, TSN. Craig, and lastly, uh, what did you make of the uh, – 
of the uh, you know the, the, Tavares obviously it's an accident by Corey Perry. I don't think there's any doubt on that. Uh, you know some people were upset and he he chose to to fight Felino. Obviously Felino asked him and you know Felino's explanation after the game I, I kind of agreed with it. He's like, hey, we got it out of the way, move on. You know neither guy was really throwing a ton of punches in that fight. What did you think of the the aftermath there? And how much do you think of Corey Perry is? previous indiscretions might have been the reason why he had to answer the bell then. Well, I mean, like, I mean, oh, so, so Corey's always played on the edge and we know that. So, you know, do, 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 does that come into to, to, uh, to a small measure of doubt? Yeah, perhaps. But I, I don't think that Corey Perry or any player could recreate that situation again if they tried a thousand times. I just don't. It's just, I think that Kerry Price after the game said it's a sobering reminder of how fast the game is, how many times players get twisted and turned and contact is made and nothing happens and we do uh, end up with a situation that they saw last night. So I, I, so I don't see anything in that. I dismiss that out of hand. You know, one of the things is, is that I see that the moral police, the hockey moral police are out in, uh, out in abundance on social media after that. You know what? Like, okay, you don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it, right? But you don't get to decide. You don't have a say in it. The players are on the 200 by 85. They determine and they need to understand what needs to be addressed, what doesn't need to be addressed, what they feel has to be answered for or what doesn't have to be answered for. Nick Foligno laid it out on the line for Corey Perry. Corey Perry said, yep, that's good. And that has to do with the situation of the players. It doesn't have to do with any of the moral, the hockey moral police outside because it doesn't matter. And I've always believed that the players are the ones on that 200 by 85 that are in the, the, the milieu, so to speak, that get to determine that, not anybody outside of it. Craig, good stuff, man. Uh, have a good weekend, and uh, we will talk to you uh, next Friday. Any big pickleball matches lined up? <laughs> Against Listen, his wife. We had snow down here the last couple of days, okay, and a little bit of rain. So, actually, I'm going to get out on the court and just have a little kind of uh, return to match kind of day today. Tomorrow morning could be a different story. We could We could ramp up the intensity a little bit. No, have right, you well, been cleared though? Since uh, your uh, your your glasses cut you under the eye and above the eye, are you cleared medically? <laughs> Jason, I'm not sure I'd ever be cleared medically because <laughs> they can't determine if the damage was before or after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good luck with it. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great long weekend. You too. That's uh, Craig Button from TSN, our big guest of the day, brought to you by Black Rifle Coffee Canada. Go to blackriflecoffee.ca or stop in this weekend at the store just by service place. We will uh, return. We got uh, LT. We got uh, Willie Nylander. Come back, player of the weekend. More on Empton Sports Leader, TSN 1260. Positive Friday, two and a half hours away from hot drop in game two. The Oilers and the Jets. But if you're too excited, you're too nervous, you can't wait. Well, guess what? You've got uh, some other games to catch up on. Washington, Boston, Carolina, Nashville. And then the late game after the Oilers start, of course, Colorado takes on St. Louis. But it's time for the Willie Nylander comeback person of the week. Sometimes in life, you face adversity. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Some collapse, while others, like William Nylander, face it head on. It was a long negotiation uh, to get to where uh, both sides were happy. It's time for the William Nylander Comeback Award. You have never seen any player play as hard as I will play the rest of the season, and you never see someone push the rest of the team as hard as I will push everybody the rest of the season. You're simply the best. All right. So, hey, you guys, I love a little trash talk. I think it's fantastic. You know what? That's what sports are all about. It's supposed to be fun. You want to have some, especially if it's non-offensive. So the Winnipeg Jets on uh, yesterday, early in the day, they put out a picture, and, it, and the hashtag, they had uh, uh, Connor McDavid with Pionk, and it just said rent-free, right, suggesting that Pionk's <laughs> living rent-free in his head. Right? I'm just like, oh, this is gold. Or, this gets people fired up. Well, guess what, Struddy? They delete it. 
right? A few hours later, like somebody was all, oh, geez, like somehow that's going to be the thing that fires up Connor McDavid. Like he, he wasn't in, he wasn't disappointed enough. Suddenly he's going to read that tweet and be like, oh, you know what? Now, now, guess what? I'm going to have to do something. So, and then, and the best part though is, then they have a tweet today that has hashtag walk the walk of guys walking. Like, come on. Like, what do you, that was actually, I was going to give him kudos to that. I'm like, that's fun. Add a little smack. Cause you know, your fans, if you're a Jets fan, you're loving that because we all know it has zero impact in the game. Zero. And it's not even unprofessional. Look at Carolina's, what they do on Twitter and they, it's all fun. Rent free is not harmful. It's not disrespectful. It's fun. And the Jets have to come back with walk. The, and you know what their walk the walk is? Pictures of guys walking. Fail. I'm glad this isn't telling me wrong because we'd be on the different sides of this one, Greg's. But uh, I'll go. I'll go second here. Um, Nikita Kucherov out forever and just miraculously is able to come back for game one of the playoffs and puts up uh, what was it three points I believe if I remember correctly it's just it's it, it's such a, a complete circumvention of the cap uh, and, and anyone can tell me it isn't but it is it, we all know it is and, and fine they got away with it and you know Ray said it pretty well he's like they didn't do anything wrong no well technically they did it there's a gray area of the rules so I don't like it uh, I think it's unfair, uh, but it's a miraculous. Like he's almost up there with the Willie Nylander himself for the comeback. He was able to come back just in time for the regular season. Send some uh, frustration in both you guys today. <laughs> There's I'm, a lot of anger. <laughs> I'm going to go very positive on this positive Friday, and my nominee will be uh, Noah Bryant. He's a four-year-old that lives in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Big fan of SpongeBob. Uh, his mom is a student at NYU. We're getting her degree to do social work. She's got two other brothers that he has. And uh, he's a big fan of SpongeBob. And uh, he borrowed his mom's phone and opened up Amazon and decided to order $2,600 worth of SpongeBob popsicles from Amazon. And if you're wondering, that's 51 cases, 918 popsicles. Now, Amazon obviously won't take back those popsicles. They're probably maybe a little bit melted. So this kid bought you know, almost $3,000 worth of popsicles and it worked out perfectly for them. You know, he thought he might have to come back and, and raise some money. His mom was worried about the funds. Someone started a GoFundMe account. They've raised over $25,000 American to pay for come these on. popsicles. Now, I don't know exactly where the rest of this money is going to go and uh, hopefully it goes to people who need it. But uh, Noah, man, well played, buddy. You put yourself in a tough predicament, but people had your back. <sighs> Hey, hey, you know what the know rule is it? here, guys? You don't let your kids play with your phone. <laughs> right? Like, that's the number. I see people do it all the time. I'm like, what are you doing? What? You're just asking for trouble. You don't let your kids play with your phone. None. Right? And especially, like, put a, don't you have it, like, when your phone is inactive for 30 seconds, it locks. Right? So then, for that exact reason, your buddy can't pick it up. If you, by chance, have a few too many and you leave it somewhere. I like that's just come on, this parents. But and hey, good for them. People will donate money to anything. I'm guessing the extra. Hopefully, they go to ch to charity because we shouldn't be rewarding stupidity. Let's just you know. And the company probably should have given it back. Like they might have wondered, say, hey, wait a sec, do you really want twenty five hundred dollars worth of popsicles? Like I guess maybe it's a, uh, you know, maybe they order it to all the stores and maybe a store just orders that many. I have no idea, but I don't know. Strutty, have your kids ever taken your phone? Um, uh, to play music maybe and stuff like that, right? But I, I don't even but know. But when they were four? Online. What's that? When they were four? Uh, no, they didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how to play <laughs> music anyways there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, yeah, you know what, buddy? I, I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how to order anything on my phone. Like, I, I don't get any of that stuff. So, well, give him credit. I mean, I guess he can figure it out. But that's a lot of, I mean, the kid really likes his popsicles, I guess. Give the kid credit. Yeah. Passionate. Yeah. Wow. It's a tough one. So you can go for Popsicle Kid, the uh, Jets, or Nikita Kucherov. Text into uh, 10, 12, 6. We got a lot of texts coming in uh, in regards to that. Uh, hey, boys, some trash talk from the teams would add fuel to the fire. Anything to fire up this series has been a dud. Gregor, you're bang on. I thought it was funny, and I'm a diehard Orders fan. If that uh, fired up the order is great, but I really don't think that Connor McDavid is searching on Twitter to see what people are saying about him after they lose. Right, that's the number one rule. 
Strutty, you've always said, don't go on social media. I'm pretty sure the players aren't going on social media after a loss. So how it would even impact them is beyond me. I don't, I don't see it as bulletin board. It's like bulletin board material now is, uh, is Twitter. I think that might be a stretch. Yeah, no, I, I just don't think I just don't see any reason to poke the bear. I, I just don't get it. Uh, I don't get it. You can guarantee the players that have seen it. Like they, they all know it. I, I, like it's just some guy on his or a girl on his Twitter, you know, working for the Jets and putting up. I just don't see, like, what what does it serve? What purpose? That your your whole purpose is to win, and so to have someone put that up on there, I, I'm with Jacques Clamer. I, I don't get. I don't see why that helps the team win. Wasn't even a, that good of a tweet. Rent free, like that. That was a great saying in 2016. Is this like a 48 year old social media manager? Like, come on, get something fresh, do something better. What are you gonna do the SpongeBob meme, like lowercase, suffercase letters next? Like, come on. That's why they should have deleted it because it wasn't funny. <laughs> oh God, Connor doesn't like. We all have our own issues with it. <laughs> Maybe that's what makes it good. <laughs> Everyone doesn't exactly. like it for a different it, reason. It was good. Taking it down was bad. It was funny. It was good. Like, it's, it's lighthearted. We need more of that. Even not to take everything so seriously. Like, the Carolina Hurricanes, there's a reason why they've won awards for their social media. They do it funny, right? They poke fun at other teams sometimes. Then they're always nice and make nice comments about other teams. They know how to do it. And they don't worry because here's the thing. You can send them a social media post. And you know what? If you're going to worry about the one person who complains every time, nothing's going to happen. And our problem in society is we worry about the complainers way more because most people, right, like who's, to, to really be that upset over it, seriously. Right? Oh, geez, turtful. Oh, give me a break. Right? That's our problem with society now. We respond to the small, small, small vocal minority way too often. You're never going to appease everyone, ever. So why worry about it? As long as you're not making derogatory, racist, sexist, you know, you're not hurting someone physically, mentally, I don't see it being a big issue. We're way too overly sensitive on little comments because, you know, Sally in, uh, in marketing got offended or Bob in... Uh, in the back warehouse, he got offended. Well, geez, now we got to change everything. So, not good. Hey, Gregor, some players absolutely search their name on Twitter. Cassian blocked me after last game. <laughs> uh, well, what did he block you for? Yeah, why? Like, right? I'm guessing it wasn't a complimentary tweet. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> did you go? On? Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, like when you go attack a person on Twitter and then you're and then you wonder why they block you. Yeah. Why? Why would they? Why should they have to read your stupidity? Like I've never understood that. Like I don't. I would never just go out of my way and somebody just go on and, and attack the person. You're a piece of garbage. You're a loser. Like really? Yeah, the worst player ever. I, I don't understand that either. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, so I respect it when people do it. Like you know what? Boo hoo. Then there's, guess what? Now there's consequences for our actions. If you'd like to follow them, now you can't. So, I don't know. But, yeah, if, I probably wouldn't recommend doing it if I was a player. Like, not much good's probably going to come from it after a loss or a win. It'd be better to not to go on. Or if you want to go on there, just go on your search line. I wouldn't search your ads. It's, uh, it's never great. It's part of the job in our industry. I get it, but... Um, there's people that you just say, you know what? I don't need to hear from you. The mute button's the best. Mute button's the best. Because then they follow you, but you don't even know if, if you can ever see what they say. It's outstanding. We'll come back with uh, five questions, but first, it's Pause of Friday. This is the last Friday, your chance to qualify for the ultimate $10,000 fan cave. This is what a great package. You're going to win a 65-inch TV from the brick. You're going to get $2,000 to pick out recliners of your choice. Then you're going to play more tables and game. you got 2,500 bones. You can pick out whichever game you want. You get memorabilia merchandise courtesy of Pro-Am Sports of your choice, $1,250. bucks. you are getting food. You're getting a beer for it. You can get flooring put in. It's unbelievable. The complete makeover. You're going to text one word to 10-12-60. It's very simple. Bogey. B O G. EY. Text it right now to 10 12, Gregson Struds with you as, hey, good news. The, the buds are all out 
on the trees. Nice. Maybe a foreshadowing for the buds out, if you know what I'm saying, Struddy. If you know what I'm saying, I, I'll say that. I've never seen Struddy root so hard for a team than he is rooting for the Montreal Canadiens right now. And I know why. He's just rooting for the opportunity to troll his friends in Toronto. And I'm here for it. I'm completely here for it. It is true. I've got a tweet lined up already. I'm excited about delivering. And it'll be delivered the moment that that happens. And uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's one game, like the same as the Oilers, right? It's, the series not over for sure. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting, especially no Tavares now, man. That makes a big difference. That's a big change. Oh yeah, for sure. Let's get to uh, five questions brought to you by the Brick. And uh, this long weekend, the uh, their annual famous tent sale is going on. Great deals all over. You can get it this weekend at the Brick, saving you more. It's time for five questions on the Jason Greger Show. All right, guys, why don't we kick it off with some official predictions for Game 2, Oilers-Jets. Um, I think the Oilers come out with more urgency. I think they have a better start. Like, Not not that their start was poor, but just, just come out and bring some juice to it and then try to get the first goal. So I think tonight is, um, I think the Oilers actually have an explosion. Um, I'm looking like a 5-1 uh, type type evening. 5-1. Now, Cons, can you put that under our Nostradamus uh, predictions? The Oilers are going to have a better start. So if they get one shot in the first eight minutes, then it'll be better. So I oh. love those ones. Uh, but I do like the 5-1 score, Strutty. That's, uh, that's bold. Oof. I hope you're right, man, because I love offense. But uh, I see a tight, I see a tight game tonight, uh, Edmonton squeaking out a 3-2 win. All right, guys, uh, I'm just going to check right now to make sure there's been no update. And as of late, all we know is that uh, Nazem Kadri will be having an in-person hearing via Zoom, in-person through Zoom, for the hit on Justin Falk. What do you guys think should happen suspension-wise? Well, this is third suspension of the postseason. A uh, guy doesn't seem to learn at the most crucial time of the year. Uh, I say six games. I think they're going to they're gonna come down on him hard because he's yet to show an ability to change. Yeah, I think he's out for this series for sure. After that, I, I'm, I'm not so sure, but he's he's definitely not coming back for this series. Like, let's let's get get serious here. But that could only be two game struts. I, see, that's why I don't think they'll do what they did last time, which was the remainder of the series, which was a maximum four games. I think uh, I think this one's longer. I think they're going to go with a set number just because of that reason. Because if like what like could St. Louis maybe win a game, right? So then he only gets suspended three. Like I, I think Colorado probably wants to lose one game just so it is three games wasted in this series and and less in the second round. You guys talked or touched on it a little bit there, but let's just say you're Corey Perry after that incident with John Tavares. Uh, Nick Lino comes up to you. Are you fighting? That's a good question. Um, if I'm Corey Perry and I play that style of game, and I know that Corey Perry didn't do anything wrong there, that one, I would like. I've seen Corey Perry do cheap stuff. That wasn't one, but I think you. I understand why Corey Perry took the fight. I really do. And and I saw kind of how he did in the fight, too. He wasn't really throwing any punches or anything. So I, I kind of have respect for that, right? Like, And, and Felino's a strong guy, but it's not like F- Felino's a killer. He's not like his brother. Marcus is much tougher, and that's okay. So I I can understand why Corey Perry did. You get it out, it's over, and it's done with, and you move on. So sometimes it's better to just solve the issue rather than let it linger. So, yeah, I think I probably would have. Yeah, you just do it. You know, you just do it. You know, like you understand the way it works. Uh, you know, this guy uh, is out. He's their captain. You, you got to go. You got to, you know, pay the dues. And it just, it's over now. Like, they're, they're, it's, it, it, it doesn't linger on. I think that's the biggest thing. It doesn't linger on. So, yeah, I'd take the fight for sure. Question number four. According to TSN's Pierre Lebrun, Rick Tockett and Bruce Boudreaux, a couple of candidates for the Sabres coaching job. Who do you think would be the best hire for the Sabres going forward? someone who's patient they need a very patient human being uh because it's it's going to be a long process to turn that bad boy around uh but there has to be someone with some pedigree if you want to keep jack eichel yeah i I think you're going to need a coach who's who's an excellent motivator and somebody who can change your opinion because I'm guessing Jack Eichel's opinion right now is, I don't want to be here. Uh, Ristolainen doesn't necessarily want to be there. Right? None of their top players 
want to be there. So you're the coach. You've got to, you've got to be an unbelievable wordsmith who can convince people to necessarily do something that they didn't want to do a month or two ago, because I'm guessing, you know, by the time the end of the season, when the new hire is. So that's, I think that's, I don't know who that is. I don't know if Boudreaux can do it. I don't know if Kotaka can do it. And like, I get there's only 32 jobs in the NHL, but man, like right now, Buffalo is probably bottom five appealing jobs to get in the NHL. They are. And you know, it's going to be a process, right? Greg, so you know, it's going to take a Mm -hmm. while to get this organized and get this done. Final question for you guys. Hypothetical Friday for you. Your order to practice one of the seven deadly sins daily. Which would it be? Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, or sloth? What does sloth mean again? Lazy, do nothing. Hmm. Not ideal. Um, geez, none of them really sound that appealing. They shall be sins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go with the sl- I'll go with the eating part. Just pound the food, I guess. Oh. If I need to, I'll just absolutely pound it. Right. Wow. Well, there's two that I think at least have have positive side effects from it. If you're lust, at least then you're probably going to have you know going to have a good sex life, so that'll be good. But I, I guess I would go with greed. You know, if I would do it because at least then I'm probably going to have some money. Like I don't like any of them. I'm not a I'm not a greedy person by nature, especially when it comes to finances. But I guess I'd probably have to pick one of those two. So I guess I'll go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go lust because at least you know what the, that way I should be having some enjoyment in life, even though if it might be a a mind uh, a mind screw, no pun intended. I can't wait to hear what Connor's going to do. Oh, I'm I'm going sloth. Just. Hang out, relax on the couch, maybe mix in a little bit of gluttony as well, order pizza. I'm good with that. You know, I, I feel like I've lived a good chunk of my life with that uh, kind of mindset, so I'll definitely go sloth. <laughs> Tommy. I mean, is anyone taking, like, envy, though? Yeah, envy. <laughs> I think envy would be the worst one. Or wrath. Like, those two would be, like, or pride, I don't think. That would be, that would get old pretty easy, so... Yeah, like gluttony, I just, like, I don't know, gluttony eventually, like, you're just, you're going to be too unhealthy, and I just, I don't, health is the one thing that if you don't have it, it really makes life hard, I find, right, Uh, money in the world, like, all the money in the world can't buy health, right, we've seen that, if you live a super unhealthy lifestyle, well, oh well, so, yeah, gluttony would be, gluttony might be last for me, I might even take envy before. Much as I don't Envy'd like be it. hard though, because you always want what everybody else has, right? That's yeah. you're never satisfied. I've seen that no. before, and I think that's like not satisfied as far as with like you always want to improve yourself, I guess, but not you're, you're always like, geez, I have X, and my friend has X plus ten percent. Well, I got to have that as well. And you're just you're always chasing it, right? I don't think that's a healthy uh, healthy lifestyle. It's a good question though, because you have, you got to pick, like, you know, you're picking the best of the worst. In essence, which I like, it. it's good. It's good. Good question, cons. It's a good question. Stretty, have yourself. So here's a funny one for you, Stretty, because we'll be on Monday. I know it's a holiday, but we'll be on because it's playoffs. Uh, when we come on Monday at two o'clock, Stretty, what is the series going to be at? Because they play oh, tonight God. and they play Sunday. Well, Greg, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's going to be two one. Yeah, for who? <laughs> Um, no straight on the strikes again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my heart says uh, Oilers. My head says Jets. Mm. Yeah, what I'm about kind of you? In the same, I'm kind of in the same boat. Uh, I yeah. think uh, I think the Oilers win tonight. I think the Jets win on Sunday, and then uh, sets up a a big game uh, Monday. I, I think this. Uh, I think it's going to be two two when it's all said and done, and then it'll be a best of three. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, well, and I think Nick Ehlers. I think Nick Ehlers makes uh, an appearance on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I watched him very close at practice today. Started like shooting, no problem. He was he must have fired at the after practice like 60, 70 pucks. So clearly he can shoot the puck, no problem. Uh, and then he had some conditioning skates. Uh, he's looking pretty close. So I think you might see a Nick Ehlers uh, entrance into the series on Sunday. But uh, I think McDavid and Drysaddle um, take over tonight. This is my my prediction so soir strutty have yourself an awesome weekend we will uh, talk to you alundi see you then everybody
Let's get to uh, Connor with a Sports Center update brought to you by Edmonton Kubota, where you can get a VX80 compact tractor. Now, this thing is great for your acreage, your farm, or your commercial site. Right now at EdmontonKubota.com.